Hello. <laughs> it's Tiana Dodson here today for day three. Oh, this is German three. Day three, English three of American three. I don't know. Day three of the read with me challenge. And I am wearing my very cool sunglasses because, um, well, because I'm having beer and pizza pizza Ooh, with pineapples for dinner tonight um because because I can because I'm an adult and um I have my sunglasses on because I feel like the story is heating up also where we are right now is we are talking about Phaethon who is the son of Helios the god of the sun um and uh, Phaethon is is out doing the thing that his father uh, has granted him favor to do, um, which is he's leading the chariot of fiery horses across the heavens as a demigod. And um, yesterday we got to a place where ooh, it was getting spicy. So I'm going to try to keep my sunglasses on, but they are polarized. So this is very challenging for me to read. But what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm going to get my timer set up because I didn't do that ahead of time. Haha. -ha. But okay. So here we go. Hmm. All right. So there was, there was a lot of scrolling yesterday. All right. So here we go. Um, I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday. Reading The Forge in the Forest by Padre Colum. All right. So to Phaethon, the horses, I didn't start my timer. To Phaethon, the horses were but tossing their manes. The bright wheels were but spinning as they should spin. He stood upright in the chariot, holding the reins, and he spoke. Are these the hands of one who has, is half immortal? These hands that hold and guide the horses of Helios. But must men speak always of the horses of Helios? Would that there was a way of making men below wonder at their course today. Wonder, and then know that not Helios, but another, one younger and more daring than he, has hands upon the reins today. Plunging and plunging, the horses went farther and farther off their course. They went too far from their course in the blue heavens. Earth withered as they came too near. Fire sprang up, fire, and again fire. The trees on the plains crackled and dropped branches and burned. On the mountains and the forests took fire. Now there were mountains burning with fires that went up to the sky. He knew now that the steeds had gone from their course. He tried to guide them back. The fiery steeds turned savage eyes and bared teeth upon him. Urgh. They tossed their heads, the wheels spun faster and faster, and the chariot rocked as they rushed and plunged along. Fires went up in the cities of men. In the rivers and lakes, the waters dried up. Men lay dying upon the earth. The young man, Phaethon, knowing his hands too weak to guide them, shouted to the fiery steeds. Zeus, the ever-watchful, saw Phaethon's course through the heavens, saw the plunging steeds and the fire going up on the earth, and he knew that all life must be destroyed by the horses and chariot coming nearer and nearer to the earth. Uh, might, might be destroyed. He gathered the clouds together, making a veil between the chariot and the world of men, and the, then he flung his lightning on young Phaethon. The lightning of Zeus tore him from the chariot, and the horses, now that they no longer felt his hands upon the reins, staggered back to their course. Feebly now they went on. Feebly they finished their journey. But they won back to the shining stables that had been built for them by Hephaestus beside the gleaming halls of Helios. Down, down into the seething sea, young Phaethon fell. But he was not lost in the sea. The daughters of Hesperus found him and lifted his body out of the depths of the sea. They made a tomb for him on the seashore, and they wrote above his tomb, Young Phaethon fell from his father's chariot, but even so he lost nothing of his glory, 
for his heart was set upon doing of great things. Mm. Ah, yes. The end. Mm. And now we're going to start a new one. Old King Forkbeard and the scarf that he gave. <sighs> With his kettle of fire burning above him, old King Forkbeard stays under a hill in our land. Sometimes the fire in his kettle burns very low, and then the people say, King Forkbeard is sleeping. Sometimes the fire in his kettle lights up the sky, and then they say, we had better look out, for now King Forkbeard is dreaming that he will come down and wet his horse's hoofs in the sea. Old King Forkbeard was always dreaming that he would wet his horse's hoofs in the sea. His red horse stayed beside him where he stayed, under the kettle of fire, and fed upon black oats. Then a day would come when King Forkbeard would stand straight up. He would tip over the kettle and spill the fire down the hill. He would mount his red horse and go galloping down towards the sea. And our own horses, as King Forkbeard upon his red horse came along, would break out of their stables. The goats would have gone first, and the horses would follow where the goats led. The cattle would go plunging about. The sheep would run up a hillside. The cocks would crow, seeing the redness from the kettle of fire. The hens and chickens would go flying from bush to bush, thinking that each bush would be the last they would have to fly to. The ducks would be lost the most quiet of all. They would find a stream and go swimming in it. The geese would remember they had wings. They would spread them out, and some of them would go flying towards the moon. And so old King Forkbeard, upon his red horse, would go through the land. On and on he would go, so that his horse might wet its hoofs in the sea. And many a good cornfield, mm, there's my time, I'll finish. And many a good cornfield, and many a good grazing field, he would spoil for us as he went upon his way. But after a while, he would be back under his hill, sleeping, with his knees drawn up to his beard, and his horse beside him, feeding upon black oats and the kettle of fire burning above him. Mm. So that's where we're going to stop today with our five minutes of reading. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you'd like to join me to read for five minutes a day and practice getting your reading habit up, then feel free to join me and comment below that you're joining. Tell me what you're reading. Tell me how you're enjoying it. Tell me how it went. Um, or if you want to record yourself reading, then please do so, because that's like lots of fun. I'd love to see it. Um, and use the hashtag, hashtag read with me challenge or hashtag Insta book club. So thank you so much for joining me today. See you tomorrow. Bye.